Sure. Um, let me begin by saying if, uh, if we had implemented that route, we'd be in there right now having discussions and trying to get that legislation through. Um, this, the way that we proceeded was uh, not only the quickest way, but the best way. We are a government that believes in collective bargaining. We want parties to come together. We were given the assurance throughout this that both parties recognized the impact that this was having on Canadians, had a true commitment and spirit to resolve this, and both were committed to being flexible. So all those things working together, we were um, optimistic that they would come to resolution, and uh, the resolution that they came to was evidence that, in fact, they were you know, truthful in terms of how they were approaching it. So did you tell them you wouldn't go to that route as a way of pressuring them to get a deal? Our commitment was to continue to um, uh, speak with the parties to ensure that they were aware of how important this was across the country. And everyone was seeing that. It was on the news every day. Um, more and more people expressing, uh, farmers in all types of sectors, how much this was having an impact on them and the parties at the table were very aware of that as was uh, the federal mediator and so together the commitment was that they would come to a solution and they did recognizing what was at stake. Now, was, was the rhetoric a little high? Minister Just look at Minister Garneau, you mentioned that you're going to be following the resumption of CN over the over the next few days. Um, industry is saying that it's going to take weeks to get to deal with the backlog and as you know winter is about four weeks away. Mm -hmm. um, is CN going to have to revise their winter shipping plan and is there a plan in place to ensure that things don't fall off the rails again, no pun intended, in four weeks when so, winter comes? So I'll answer that in a second but I do want to repeat something that Minister Tassi made very, very clear. Had we taken an approach like the previous government of deciding to legislate back to work, we would not have a solution today because as quickly as we would have decided to convene Parliament with everything that needs to be done to arrive at, let's say, royal assent for piece of legislation, we still would not have an agreement today. The result, because of the approach that we took, is that we do have a solution today, and better still, the two sides sat down and mutually agreed to a solution, and that is always a better approach than to use forced legislation. So I just wanted to make that point. Uh, CN is, uh, is uh, a very experienced, large company, and yes, they're very aware of all the goods we need to be moving, whether it's grain out in the West, and they did move some trains, by the way, during the strike, uh, but they're very aware of it. Now, they will get going as quickly as possible, but it's a complex, choreography in the sense that you can't have all of the trains going into BC to the port of Vancouver or even the port of Prince Rupert all at the same time. So there has to be a choreography to do it as quickly as possible. And that is exactly what CN has the, the expertise and the experience to do. So they're very aware of it. And they know that winter is coming and they know that that means shorter trains going at slower speeds. So they're acutely aware because the grain farmers out west have a pressing need to get their corn to foreign markets and they're going to work as quickly as possible to do that. And in terms of the winter plan, uh, I'm sure that given the fact that there's been an interruption of, uh, uh, of eight days and there has to be a ramping back up, uh, that, uh, that they will submit some amendments to, given the, that this situation has occurred to their, their, that they will provide a revised winter plan. And, and on propane, um, the reserves, of course, there are none, and, and winter is coming. Is there any effort from the government to prioritize propane shipments in the next, coming, the next few days to Ontario, Quebec, and the Maritimes? I would ask you to ask that question to CN, but CN is very aware of their customers' needs. So on provincial rhetoric, we heard from a couple premiers, we heard some really heated words coming out of the election into this labor dispute. Were those words too strong or were people representing their, their needs regionally, do you think? It seemed very, very heated. It's perfectly legitimate for, for provincial uh, governments and municipalities and stakeholders and individual Canadians to express their concerns when something like this happens and affects their lives. It certainly makes people aware of the fact that, uh, that there are strong concerns that exist at different government levels and at, uh, in, in industry, in the private sector, and at individual people level. In some cases, uh, 
you know, employees. And so that's, that is fair game. It's something that uh, is going to happen and, and, and everybody has to, has to absorb that when it does happen. And do you see the two rail companies as an essential service in this country? Do you see them as an essential service that they should no longer have a, uh, a labor dispute like this? They should just be, be forced to deliver services and work out their things through mediation? What I will say, and I think Canadians realize this, is just how important our railways are in this country. Uh, I think this, that was uh, made very, very clear this week, not only the railways themselves, but their employees, how uh, important it, the job that they do in moving our goods across this country to the required destinations both inside the country and outside the country. I think it makes people realize just how important they are, and they are incredibly important for the economy of this country. So that's what I'll say. I think it was one of the key issues in the negotiations here that the union had raised. You had looked at the work rest rules that CNN submitted in the summer. You said that they weren't following science. I'm just curious if you know if fatigue is part of the settlement here, and if that's acceptable if, this, if there's no change. So in a, uh, there's a parallel activity that's, that's going on here, and it's one that you alluded to that, um, as you know, uh, last year um, we came out with uh, work uh, flight duty day fatigue regulations in the air industry for pilots. And uh, I said at the time that we would do the same because it was important, and the Transportation Safety Board was asking us to do it in the rail industry and also in the marine industry. And so we've started that process with the rail industry. And in the rail industry, your working day and your rest time are regulated by what's called work rest rules. And that is something that we are actively working not only with the railways, but also with the employees, the unions of the railways, so that we can ensure that we use the best science to establish how long a day and under what conditions and how much rest is required to avoid fatigue. And we're even going to look at uh, fatigue risk management systems such as we have implemented in the air world. So yes, that is being addressed from a safety point of view. And that's a process we started earlier this year and we will continue to, uh, and, and, and both the, the Teamsters, CN, CP, and other unions are very, very aware of the fact that this is a priority for the government. This country I, think, I think that um, what has transpired uh, over the last number of months is an indication of, um, you know, how this impacted Canadians. And I think that that has been felt loud and clear. Um, and I think that that was a part uh, at, at the negotiation table. The parties recognized the impact that this was having on Canadians. And it was that recognition, together with the spirit that they uh, went to that table with, which is a spirit of wanting to reach a, a deal and having flexibility in reaching that deal. So I think all those things came together. And, um, and as a result of that, we end up today in a very good place for all Canadians, which is the parties have uh, agreed. And we hope that now this will be ratified by the membership. Thank, Thank you. Everybody. Thank you.